Staff Room Monologues, in association with the National Union of Teachers. Locked Stockroom and Two Smoking Gerbils is a, a very funny um, monologue um, and we received lots of uh, entries. Uh, the monologues all had a great deal of humour in them. Um, this one is about the new breed of executive headmaster and is written by a supply teacher from Sheffield and I hope you enjoy it. What am I doing? Why am I locked in the music storeroom, nursing a lump the size of Kilimanjaro? It's a good question. And to be honest, I don't know the answer. The last thing I remember is being disturbed by a timorous knocking on my office door. Sylvia Sensible from year six was standing there holding a note. Could I go to her classroom immediately? Well, I winced at the prospect of entering the engine room of educational practice. The heat, the crowds, the senseless violence. Surely it would be in everyone's best interest if I remained here at the helm, monitoring performance using complex data inputs and personalised subject tracking grids. Surely there's somebody else who can handle the practical side of things. <laughs> well, apparently there wasn't. My deputy, Mrs. Vigor, was on a restraint training course. God help Mr. Vigor. And Ms. Ernest, my learning mentor, had gone on a home visit with a community policeman and a social worker. Oh, and a chat from the RSPCA, just in case there was another pit bull involved. So, <laughs> it was down to me. Ah, well, nobody said headship was going to be easy. Is there a problem, Miss Goodchild, I asked, ignoring multiple disorders, multiple disorderly kicking of the stockroom door. I smiled optimistically at her, hoping it would make that little vein in the side of her head pulse less violently. I'm afraid multiple's been rather difficult this afternoon, she said. I noticed that her voice was as sweetly strung as an over-tightened piano wire. Perhaps you could talk to him, she said. I smiled in the boy's direction, and despite his express wish that I should mind my own copulating business and copulate off, I attempted to get to the bottom of his troubles. Unfortunately, as things turned out, his troubles were more complex than I anticipated. He mentioned something to me about a ball, about an ant and a deck, all of which were copulating, and none of which made sense. So, after deftly avoiding several airborne items, including a large novelty pencil case in the shape of Britney Spears, a hydration for education water bottle and a primary thesaurus, and pausing only to advise other children to ignore multiple leaping from desk to desk and stomping in their work, I retired to a safe distance and conferred professionally with Miss Goodchild. As head teacher, I have to take a strategic view to see the bigger picture. It is all about vision. So what precisely caused this inappropriate classroom behaviour, I asked. Well, I took his ball from him and locked it in the stockroom, said Miss Goodchild. Well, was that wise, I asked. I mean, I know a ball being thrown around a classroom is not entirely conducive to educational practice, but it, it was a golf ball, said Miss Goodchild, and it wasn't being thrown. She showed me the golf club. Looked like a three iron. There were several hematomas, which is why I had to ban Anton Deck the fourth, she added. Anton Deck the fourth, I asked. Our class gerbils, she explained. He plays with them when he's been good. It's his reward. We're on our fourth pair. A fourth pair of gerbils, I asked. She nodded. But what happened to the other three pairs? Well, he tends to get a bit rough with them, she whispered. And at this point, I must have been unable to disguise my shock because she became rather defensive. Well, they're no less durable than guinea pigs and they're a damn sight cheaper. 
I could just see multiple setting light to Anton Beck's cage through the keyhole. Smoke and orange flames are bursting forward, not to mention several high-pitched squeals. <laughs> are we properly engaging him, Miss Goodchild? After all, he has special needs. Are his needs being met in your differentiated lessons? Have you made reference to his personalised learning plan? Have you taken into account the fact that he's a kinesthetic learner? Does he have a pastoral support programme? Does he have a sticker chart? Does he have a time-out card? Does he have an egg timer? Mm -hmm. And has he taken his medication, Miss Goodchild? Miss Goodchild, please. Please, that is not setting a good example for the children. Please, Miss Goodchild, would you put the three iron down and move away from the desk? Just put the three iron down and... <laughs> As luck would have it, the bell rang for playtime. And after a brief but noisy stampede, we were left alone. At least that's what I thought. The room went blissfully silent except for the gentle sound of Ant and Deck the Fourth scuffling playfully in the straw. Miss Goodchild placed the three iron on her desk. Her hands were shaking. She walked away from it. I began to follow her. Halfway across the classroom, she stopped and turned. She pointed a finger. Her mouth opened as though she was about to scream. And, and that's as much as I remember. Miss Goodchild is as pulseless as I have ever known her. I suspect she needs urgent medical help. Which is why I have decided to update health and safety procedures, ensure there is a contingency plan for dealing with locked music stockrooms, revise policy on the avoidance of serious head injuries, introduce a code of conduct to prohibit death in service, and begin a formal review of fire precautions. Now, I say fire precautions because the smoke is just beginning to seep under the door. Dealing with this really ought to be in someone's job description. You see, it's all about vision. Vision. My name's Steve Edison and I uh, live in Sheffield and I'm a supply teacher at the moment. I've just recently become a supply teacher and uh, I was a teacher at, at a school, a particular school, for 17 years before that. One, take two. Well, the inspiration essentially comes from the people that you work with and, and the people that you experience through your career. Hang on. Hang on to this. The thing that came to my mind when I was beginning to write this was the, the story of the Emperor's New Clothes, uh, that, that sometimes people have to start believing something that, that, that really your common sense tells you this is crazy and sometimes things come through, initiatives and ideas come through and you think if you stand back a little bit and look at it you think well this is ludicrous really, this is an absolutely crazy idea but somehow you, you feel that you have to believe in it because it's your job to believe in it and, and, and you've got to put it into practice and then you go away and scratch your head and think how do we actually do this in practice and how do we find the hours and the time to do all this. I smiled optimistically at her hoping that I would make that little when I first started teaching 22 years ago, head teachers would take a class or they would take groups out or do that sort of thing. I think these days heads tend not to take classes yeah. and, and have very little sometimes to do with children at all. Head teachers want X, Y and Z doing and then, and then teachers have to put this into practice and the head really hasn't got a grasp of how difficult this is. Sometimes you've, you've got this idea that there are generals somewhere in the background sending you out to the front line and, and somehow, um, and they've got really no idea of what, you, what you're going through and, and somehow people are, are, are surviving in that situation but a lot of us are casualties and are dragged back sometimes by colleagues and I think sometimes when, you, when, when I'm doing things with other members of staff and, and, and colleagues, it's a little bit of that Dunkirk spirit in it. You're dragging people back from the barricades with a bit of... A, a bit of humour, a touch of humour here and there. One of the new breed, I think. The, the yeah. You're right. Yeah, in the suit. Just You're to right. see somebody who you've you sort of recognised so well from television, at first it's a little bit daunting. 
I, I had a view of the character, a vision of the character, but immediately Bill's taken it over and, and I can see the character in him, but he, he gives it a different dimension as well. He takes it to, different, to a different place, you know, the place that I hadn't thought of. Just, just through things like just the mannerisms, the looks, <laughs> the odd bit of, of, of action that, it, that it puts into it. Is it a problem, Miss Goodchild? Yeah, I think being a teacher is, is, is in, a, in a way, is, is almost like being an actor. Because you walk into a classroom, you put, you walk into school. You, no matter how you feel that morning, you have to walk in. You put the smile on straight away. You, you, and and you become an. You go into role straight away. Oh yes, yeah. definitely a writer on set kind of a look. I think learning's learning's not just about about being an educator, but it's about educating yourself as well.